Welcome back to this series on APM project management. In the previous videos, we've explored the project lifecycle and how projects are structured into phases. In this video, we'll be looking at the people involved in the project processes. Understanding which roles exist in the project environment will help us to understand the structure, relationships and the challenges we could face. First of all, we have the group of people that are responsible for a significant part of the work in the concept phase. This group of people may be a senior management team, a committee, a board of directors, or any collection of people from across the business. Essentially, these are the people who have, who have identified a problem or a challenge that requires action and needs to be resolved. We call them the project board. Part of their role is to clarify what benefits should be delivered from any project and approve possible ideas for meeting the challenge or opportunity. The ideas that they come up with, or that they gather together, can be further refined as part of a business case. The project board also identifies one of their members for our next role. The project sponsor is the key spokesperson for the project board with regard to a specific project. Within project management, it is understood that single points of contact are vital to successful communication, problem solving and decision making. Our next group of people are our end users. These are the individual peoples and teams whose business as usual activities will be changed by the project. In other words, they will use or operate the outcomes of our project which should provide the benefits outlined in the business case. Consider this example. The senior management team have decided that the software systems used by our finance team requires upgrading. This may be for compliance or security reasons. So who are our end users in this scenario? It will be any member of staff that uses or interacts with that software so mostly members of the finance team, but anybody else who uses that system for reporting purposes. Of course, not all projects are about changing something internal to our own business. If someone external is paying for the project, in other words, you're delivering it on behalf of somebody else, we would usually refer to them as the client. Next up, it's us, the project manager. We answer directly to the project sponsor for reporting and progress. Note that we have a dotted line between the project manager and the end users here. While it's not directly our job to manage the end user, we will need to liaise with them frequently to ensure the project outputs are fit for purpose and make sense in their world. Next we have the project team. These are the people that are allocated to your team and will be responsible for completing a majority of the tasks needed to complete the overall project. And finally we have the project office. These are, these are the people that support your project but are not directly involved in producing outcomes. They offer administration reporting and finance services to the project. They are very much your support and logistics people. Let's take a closer look at the responsibilities of each of those roles. The project manager's key duties are to manage the project delivery itself, the project team and any contractors and suppliers needed to complete the project. They are leading people and they are managing tasks. Bear in mind that management of the project includes everything in the definition, development and handover phases. The project manager also needs to manage the needs and demands of the stakeholders. More on stakeholders and managing them in another video. As mentioned previously, the project manager also needs to liaise with those end users or clients to ensure that the outcomes of the project meet expectations. And if they don't, manage that. The business case for the project is the key document that evaluates the need for the project weighed against the effort and finance required to deliver it, essentially a cost-benefit analysis. The sponsor owns this document. It is their job to ensure it is correct, accurate and approved as part of the gate review at the end of the concept phase. The sponsor also helps the project manager to manage those key stakeholders, and again more on stakeholders in another video. 
When things go wrong or issues occur, the project manager is not authorised to make changes to the project outcomes or benefits. These type of issues are escalated to the sponsor for support with decision making and approval. As part of the business case requirements, the sponsor helps to identify and manage strategic risks. That is, risks to the business if the project fails or succeeds, not risks directly related with the tactical delivery of the project. All and any requested changes to the project requirements, outputs or benefits must be approved by the sponsor. Note that this is different from an issue. Here we are talking about a stakeholder asking for something to be changed, such as an end user requesting an additional functionality, an additional parking space, or that the bridge needs to be blue and not green. And finally, the sponsor handles any conflicts in the requirements that may arise. Perhaps the end users have conflicting demands on what the project must achieve. This is not for the project manager to manage or decide. Leave it to the sponsor. It looks like the sponsor and project manager have most of the work to do. The rest of the project board or committee are not done with though. As mentioned before, one of the key jobs of the board is to identify that project sponsor. Who is it that will take ultimate responsibility for the project? The board also help manage those key stakeholders, so the sponsor is not left to do that by themselves. Just like a board of directors, the board, support and the board support and advise the sponsor. This could be with regard to solving problems, whether to terminate a project or any other challenge the sponsor may need help with. We said that the sponsor owns the business case and is responsible for ensuring it is approved. It's the project board that will do that authorization and they will confirm that it aligns with the wider company strategy. Our next group is the end user or that client group. As they will be living with the changes introduced by the project, they clearly have an interest in what the project is doing. It's a key task of the end users to define what the requirements of the project are. How will the project's outputs actually be used? And how will it integrate with that other business as usual processes? As the project progresses, there may arise a need to make changes, large or small, in order to ensure the operation of the end product will be effective, efficient and deliver the project benefits. These changes need to be discussed and agreed, so it's important that this dotted line relationship is maintained between the end users and the project manager. And of course, these changes may be put forward by the end user or may be imposed on to them by the project constraints and requirements. Let's turn to the project team. Remember, these are the people that will be completing the actual tasks during the project development phase. Members of the project team may or may not be part of your usual team or organisation. It includes contractors, suppliers and internal staff that are helping you. The only definition of the project team member is that they complete one or more of the planned tasks. When it comes to project activities, these individuals answer to you, as you are the project manager. As the team work through the planning, they have a responsibility for supporting the project manager in identifying and reporting problems, changes required, and risks that develop. As they are doing the tasks, they are best positioned to identify those risks, issues, and change requirements. Our final group of people to look at is the project office, our administrators. This role includes some of the organisational aspects needed to support the project, such as booking travel, processing invoice payments or setting up meeting rooms. The project office is often a shared resource amongst several project and business as usual activities. This group ensure that the data and reports are collated, produced and updated, for example, making it simple for the project manager to see what has been invoiced for and what has been paid. This is vital if the project manager has any hope of accurately tracking the budget for the project. Part of the reporting duties includes preparation for assurance meetings and audits. 
We'll talk more about assurance and audits as we go along, but a useful distinction between them is this. Assurance is about keeping your stakeholders confident in your abilities to deliver the project as required. Audits are a more formal process about compliance with rules and regulations. Proving that you're on track to meet the budget requirements would be assuring your stakeholders. Financial auditors are far more interested in whether transactions are being managed appropriately and within the final regulations. This brings us to the end of this video on project roles and indeed the end of our section on the principles of project management. We have an idea of what a project is, how they're structured and the people involved and the context the project is operating in. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have, please leave a like and a comment below. In our next video we'll start looking in more detail at the business case, the key document of the concept phase. Until then, take care.